Hi everyone, welcome to the second installment of Flute Fundamentals. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about posture and technique. Now you'll notice that there's a commonality between my first video and this one, and that is that I'm going to talk again about posture. And that is because posture affects and impacts every facet of flute playing. Um, uh, whether it's tone production, all the way through to your breath capacity, all the way through to the facility of your fingers. Um, again, tension is a big part of that. But one of the greater issues that we face is um, the fact that we are playing something that is transverse. It is horizontal. And the tendency of gravity is to sink us further and further down. Not only does that um, impact the angle at which your airstream cuts across the flute and into the flute, but it also kind of just impacts everything. Your lung capacity is harmed by that. Um, it's a little bit easier to introduce tension and you're fighting constantly to keep your muscles and tendons relaxed while you are droopy or too tight. So I think one of the most important things that we can focus on is trying to hold the flute in a manner that does not cause any uh, pain, does not cause any discomfort, that does not cause any, you know, any kind of tension to arise. Uh, what I want, I think, you to understand is that the flute is typically said that we have three points of contact here. Um, the first one being the flesh of your index finger in your left hand, um, your thumb of your right hand on the back of the flute, and your pinky of the right hand. And those three points in your hands are combined with the resting of the flute upon your chin. Uh, one of the biggest issues that arises from this is a tendency to push into your chin and to have a lot of pressure here. Um, I've had several teachers who will periodically come behind me in lessons and try to tap the flute away from my chin just to test to see how tight I am. And very frequently they would have to <laughs> grab it and completely push it away. Um, that is not a good thing. I advise against that, and I'm speaking from personal experience here. What that does is it actually puts a lot of pressure on your jaw, and you'll notice flute players, it's very common for us to have certain jaw issues. If we have a clicking in our jaw, or we have TMJ, as we call it, um, this can be especially, you know, uh, painful. For people with braces, I think it's a little bit less likely to have such a pressure here, because it, it is more painful. Uh, in that moment. But um, for those of us who don't have them, it can be a very, very welcome reminder, even in a normal practice session or in the middle of band or orchestra, to think, hmm, am I pushing too hard? How am I, how am I feeling? Just check in, because it, it can be um, just a complete area of, of uh, ignorance. We don't think about it, therefore we can't see it, we don't think about it, we're focused on playing what's in front of us on the page. Um, but it's always important to check in with your body and to see, are my fingers uh, in, in any pain? Are they getting tired? Am I feeling kind of muscularly that uh, I'm, I'm playing too long? Check in with yourself and see what you need. It's very important. I can't stress that enough. So practice intelligently. Check in with yourself. See what your body needs. Um, first step is... I'm going to actually stand up for this portion of the video. Uh, first step is to make sure that when you are standing in front of a music stand, um, that your stand is neither too high nor too low. Um, one of the most common problems is that students love to put the stand at face level. And here I am facing my phone, so I'm, I've got the stand quite high already. But I'm going to put it where I usually like to put the stand when I'm standing up. Okay, this is about where I enjoy having it. I'd say that's probably about four feet high. Um, that all of a sudden frees me to look out over into the audience. Um, it gives me room. I'm not afraid that my flute's going to hit it, even if I swing out dramatically, which I don't advise you to do. But I have that clearance that I can put my flute over it completely without any risk of hitting something. Um, also, if you're playing with a conductor or you're playing with, with colleagues, this frees up your, your line of sight to them as well. So, kind of a dual purpose in that. Um, uh, now that I have my stand positioned nice and low, I'm going to put my flute up to my face. Now I have my fingers already pretty much in position. Um, if I, when I go to lift the flute to my face, I want you to be very aware of how lightly 
you place the flute against your chin initially. Nobody ever just whacks the flute into their face, right, and automatically introduces pressure there. That is introduced later, usually right here when we go to take the breath. Now, in my first video, I talked about how to breathe without introducing tension. Why would you, after breathing beautifully without any tension, take your flute up and all of a sudden push into your chin, introducing tension all along your arm here, down to your elbow. All of a sudden, your left shoulder is pretty much locked in place and you're pushing. <laughs> Avoid that. Really be considerate of how lightly the flute is placed against your chin at that moment. Hmm? Try and maintain that. Now take your deep breath and you're ready to go. Now it's a little bit hard for you to see um, the main kind of section of my flute here, the body, and how my arms are positioned. So I'm going to try and move over here. But you'll notice that my right arm has quite a bit of space in between the elbow and the rib cage. Um, some people do play a little bit closer to the body like that. I think, however, you can maximize your resonance space here. Um, oftentimes, singers will do a barrel exercise where they imagine they're holding a barrel in front of them so that they're filling to capacity in their air, but also singing out and they're creating a resonance here. I think as flute players, what we need to do is also create a resonance internally and externally, just the same as singers. So anytime you can free up the space and the tension here, because if, you, if you're someone who plays, you know, kind of like a chicken, then all of a sudden your range of motion is very, very limited. Your shoulders are tense and you have less room to actually resonate. So for a posture, put the flute up gently to your chin. Think of that. Think of the space in between your elbows and your rib cage on both arms and try to keep your wrists absolutely free of tension. Um, for my thumb and my right hand, I place it in between the first and second key here. Occasionally it will move a little bit to the back, um, but that's where I usually use as my starting point. And I recommend that you uh, don't play too far out or too far back. Try and find a neutral space where your wrist here, your, your carpal tunnel, as they say, um, is completely free of any breaking down or, you know, I mean, you can see the tendons here, um, completely free of any tension. And I don't want you to ever buckle the wrist like this. This, while it might feel comfortable for you younger people, <laughs> um, you will eventually feel it and your, your body will not like you for this. So I like to keep it as, as straight here and free of tension as possible. Now, one of my biggest pitfalls is that I play ten, I tend to play with a very straight right hand. Um, I've had many teachers yell at me over the years, and it has gotten better, believe it or not. Um, but ideally what you want to see is a curvature here, a very natural curvature. So one of the greatest exercises for this is to simply grab a book, place your hand on it like so, put your wrist, and you'll notice you're not going to go like that immediately unless you're swearing on, on the Bible in court. But just take your fingers and drop your fingertips down onto the book. That placement there is ideal because that is a lack of tension. Um, and ideally, you want to grip the flute in that same way. So it can help just to take your hand off of the flute or place it back on naturally. And don't just, just claw right onto the flute. And that is how I think you should start every practice session. When you pick up your flute, this is how you should start. Just be very conscious and aware of all of these things. Now, that will leave your fingers free and completely uh, without tension for scale practice, for technique, which I'll get into in my next video a little bit through scales and arpeggios. It will just give you all around a very, very stable level of foundation to build upon. All right? Thanks.